Hello, Rewold Endoclinicians. This is Ali Nesse, and today we're doing CBL number eight, case based learning number eight. And it is still another basic case. I know all of you are anxious so that we can start doing more advanced cases with the advanced protocol, but I'd like to keep on doing one more of the basic cases, which is this one, and then there's going to be still one more basic and um, premolar case after this case and then we're going to get into the advanced cases and the reason I'd like to do that is because I want everyone to have a very good grasp of some of the basic fundamentals of the ESX uh, system in basic cases first before we can move on to the more advanced cases where the protocol becomes more sophisticated with the addition of a couple of additional files. The basic ESX technique involves cases in which a number 15 hand file can easily make its way down to the apex. Any case in which a number 15 hand file has difficulty reaching the apex would be considered an advanced case. Basic cases can for the most part be completed using two files, uh, two ESX files, one being the expediter uh, and then usually one finishing files, occasionally two finishing files depending on uh, the kind of case you're dealing with. The advanced protocol on the other hand may require a few other files. So I just wanted to distinguish this uh, off the bat here because ESX uh, system is a very sophisticated system of instrumentation. Uh, however, it is not merely a two file system. It is a system that claims that the minimum number of files doing a root canal is two. You need to have one file that goes down there and uh, engages and gauges the apex, and then another file that would then finish that uh, preparation. So, that for the most part ends up being two files for the basic cases and as we define basic cases are those cases in which a number 15 hand file can w work its way down to the apex fairly easily. And then uh, on the more advanced cases, uh, the ESX system ends up being about uh, four files, four to five files uh, is what, it, uh, what you end up using in order to do the more advanced cases. So I just wanted to explain that before we get going. All right, so let's let's start on this. Uh, let's get straight to this clinical case that I have for you today. And this is the case of a lower premolar tooth number 20 uh, mandibular left uh, second premolar. And as you can see here from this radiograph, it has significant amount of decay distally in this tooth. And uh, this is a tooth that will probably end up needing crown lengthening as well. So it should really be discussed with the patient prior to doing the root canal therapy. Uh, and uh, and uh, usually a crown lengthening for these kinds of cases, uh, provided that the proper patient education is also implemented in terms of under the patient understanding the importance of flossing, uh, then you will be able to get uh, plenty of long-term um, um, you know, work from this tooth in the future. So uh, let's get started here. As usual, before uh, we do anything else, we use uh, our radiograph, digital radiographs to get an estimated length. And here we have about a 21 millimeter estimated length before we get started. Then from the Rewold Endo Access Kit, we first file, uh, the first bird that we use is the diamond, the flat diamond, to flatten the cusps so we can get stable reference points as well as reduce the occlusion. And then I use the 1558 saber cut uh, bar, which is a fairly uh, aggressive bar and it's great for your outline preparation fairly quickly. And I quickly uh, create a distal box and remove the decay. Uh, gross decay. I then switch to an NL45, uh, uh, a 45 degree head surgical handpiece um, because it allows me to have a little bit better access in that distal box and better visualization. After removal of the mass uh, or the gross de uh, decay, I'm now using a number four surgical length uh, burr on a slow speed handpiece and then I'm using doing the fine removal of the decay in the diseased dentin. And as usual, every time I'm removing decay using a slow speed burr, I follow that up with using ultrasonics, for which I'm using the Forza V3 unit by Brassler, and water, as it is the most efficient way to remove the cut debris from inside the canal. 
you can see here that now I have prepared uh, the preparation, removed the decay. It is a fairly deep uh, distal margin on this tooth. It's not too uh, deep, however, uh, but a crown lengthening is probably the best thing to do in this case for long-term uh, success. Now, after um, access is completed, now I'm using Opal Dam to complete my isolation. I've had primary isolation and now I'm having final isolation by providing a fluid tight seal which I uh, then cure using a light, uh, my Velo light. Then I have some of this Opal Dam material that's kind of gone over the access preparation so I just again use the saber cut burr to very quickly re-prepare the access opening and use the ultrasonic again to remove all the small debris from the area. I now have my access preparation, I put some canal clean, which is uh, uh, Rivaldendo's um, EDTA solution with a surfactant in there. And then I'd like here, just take a brief moment here and explain this concept, the new concept I'd like to introduce, which is the concept of available length. Every time you open into a root canal, you would use a size 15 hand file uh, to determine your available length. What is available length? Well, you have established from your preoperative radiograph an estimated length, which is the length that you would estimate your root canal length to be, and you're going to be off within a couple of millimeters, uh, give and take. But the concept of available length is using your size 15 hand file without heavy instrumentation, placing it down in a canal after opening, and see how deep it goes, and making a note of that length. In this case, after placing the number 15 hand file into the canal right off the bat, we've been able to uh, push that file down to about 18 millimeters. So we make a note of that because we now know that is the canal space that is available. So I'd like to actually coin this term available length because I'm going to go into that quite a bit and especially later on as we get into the advanced instrumentation. It's a concept that's very important because it tells me that we have an available space of 18 millimeters in this canal uh, that, um, that is open to a size 15 right off the bat. And don't forget that our, uh, one of our rules in the instrumentation using ESX is that you have to have a space open to a 1502 hand file before you use your expediter. However, the 1502 doesn't have to be all the way at the apex. All you need to do is you need to make sure what's your available length and then you use your expediter using SSC to get down to that length um, or maybe a tiny bit short of that and then you proceed to have, and that allows you to have coronal enlargement, which you would then proceed to get additional available length, which is the next available length. And uh, then you instrument to that length, the next available length, instrument to that length, so on and so forth until you reach the apex. That becomes really the essence of moving down a canal in a safe way. And this really is our ESX uh, advanced instrumentation protocol in a way, which I'm going to go into in a couple of tutorials from uh, this one. So we established a size 18 millimeter, not a size, a, a length of 18 millimeters for our available length here at a, with a size 1502 hand file. So what we're going to do next is now we're going to use the expediter file, which is our 1505 file, to a little bit short of that length using SSC. Now, don't forget this SSC motion is only a single stroke followed by cleaning and we're using here the endo uh, swipe uh, to clean this file. Let me take a break here and explain this. This brush is uh, going to uh, be available soon and you would be able to therefore do your SSC motion, which is single stroke and clean uh, technique far more efficiently that way. Now, I'd like to just take a moment to explain a very important concept using SSC. SSC standing for single stroke and clean technique is really a, a new way of doing operator motion using rotary files that dramatically reduces the torque on the file in a given canal. 
we established that you have an available length so that you know that it's already open to a size 1502, then using a 1505 rotary file being the expediter only is enlarging the canal laterally and coronally because of its taper. And um, this process is, uh, is, is basically a form of crown down so that you can remove the coronal restrictions so that your file can then move down uh, a little bit more, your hand file can move down a little bit more and then you follow that up again with, lower, uh, with, with, with a expediter for example and laterally enlarge that uh, open again. But I'd like to explain the concept of, well, how far do I push this? There's a question that I'm often asked, well, Ali, how, what is SSC? How deep do I have to go? Um, or how much pressure should I put on the handpiece as I'm uh, using or, uh, or applying the SSC? That requires us to explain the concept of engagement versus the concept of resistance. Oftentimes people think SSC means that you basically push the file to the moment or to the point where you, uh, where you feel resistance. And that's not true because that is actually pushing it too far. You need to take the file to engagement. And what is the difference between engagement and resistance? Well, if you think about a line, uh, if you think about the canal moving down as a straight line, well, you meet engagement first. The engagement is the point in which the file begins to cut dent in. Resistance is when the file flutes are already filled. The chip space is already filled with, uh, with debris that has been cut and now the file is being torqued. So you're feeling the resistance at that moment. The key with safe SSC implementation is that you need to just go to the engagement. So that space with, uh, at engagement is the safest time when you have not really filled the file flutes completely. So you're just filling the file flutes is when you stop and then you need to remove the file and you wipe it. So please keep that in mind. It's a very important concept to, to understand in terms of how much do you uh, push the file or how much pressure you should put in order to, uh, um, to have safe SSC motion. You know, historically manufacturers have tried to dumb the process down for us by having hand pieces that have, um, that have torque sensors in which uh, you would basically end up uh, taking it to resistance, the hand piece would get over torques and then it would start to back off. Well, uh, I think that that is uh, really not the right way to, to, to do things. I always have the torque control off in my handpiece because it really is a matter of time to engagement rather than a matter of torque. Because by the time you've over torqued that file, it's already a little too late. You really need to stop before you over torque it. And that is the safest way. And that is why I believe that um, using this particular motion and that technique of taking to engagement and not to resistance, um, it's really possible to end up having file separations that are at the order of uh, one case in 500 uh, canals to 1,000. And that really is a, a really um, possible uh, outcome that you can expect if you are using SSC you and uh, taking the file only to engagement and not to resistance. Okay, so let's move on here. Uh, we've so far uh, done a few strokes and after a few strokes, now our uh, expediter has reached that available length, which was 18 millimeters. Okay, so what we do then, we just use a little bit of ultrasonics and water up coronally. The purpose of this is because we've generated some loose debris and the ultrasonic and water very quickly removes that debris. Now it's time for working length determination. And we originally used a size 15 to, the, uh, to determine the available length, but now we need to have a smaller tip file. So we could use it either a size 10 or a size eight, depending on the, um, um, on the uh, difficulty level of the canal. And here I'm using it, connecting it directly to my PAL apex locator, and it shows that it is about 21 millimeters. So my apex locator with my number 10 goes to uh, 21 millimeters. I uh, do a couple of strokes until it's loose, and now we move on to a size 1502. Now, 
do hand instrumentation, remember everything starts with having a size 1502. You don't use the ESX or the, expedi the ESX expediter until you have a 1502. So we've done a 10, we move that up to a 15, take an x-ray to confirm, and as you can see on the x-ray, we actually do have a little bit of a hook here at the apex.